Whitney with Real Southern Woman. We have a really big day planned today. So the first thing I'm going to do is finally color my hair. Uh, I'm wiping off my counter first because it's so dirty. And I don't want y'all to see it dirty. So I'm using some scrubbing bubbles. And I'm going to wipe it down. Oh, I got them on my makeup. But um, I'm going to show y'all how I color my hair. I went to Ulta and had it colored before we were um, going out to L.A. just because I wanted it to look special, you know. But normally I don't spend the money and get my hair done. I do it myself. So today that's what we're going to do. We're going to get it colored. Um, while my hair is processing, we're going to do our Bible study today. And um, me and Chris have some friends coming over. And I'm going to be doing uh, cooking with their daughter today. So I've got a lot to get done. So I thought, oh, I'll color my hair. And then when I rinse my hair, I'll take my shower and fix my hair. But right now we're just going to color it. So I thought I'd come on and chat with y'all while we color. Um, because I hadn't seen y'all in a while. Um, I chat, you know. But anyway, I always put on something because I know I'm going to get color on what I'm wearing. Not only that, but you want to wear an old, old t-shirt when you color your hair because when you get in the shower to rinse your hair, you are going to have to take the shirt off or you can always wear a button up, but I always just put on an old t-shirt of Chris's. Now, um, I, my favorite color is L'Oreal. Um, it's lightest auburn. That's what I use. L'Oreal has the prettiest reds that look natural. Uh, now they have an excellence and they have, which is a cream and then they have a preference, I think is what it's called. And it's a very thin watery liquid. Let me just say, I buy the excellence and I really think I should be talking, I guess, I don't know how I'm supposed to be talking to y'all, but anyway, um, I buy the, uh, cream because it's easier to put on it doesn't get all over the place like the liquid and um, that's just what I like to use plus I think the reds are prettier in the excellent creams so you have a bottle the number one bottle um, and I can't see it without my glasses on you got your developer cream which is number one you've got uh, your permanent color cream which is number two You've got conditioner treatment, which is number three, which I put in the shower. And then when I wash my hair, I use it. And then you've got the pre-color treatment spectrum, I mean serum. Now, a lot of people say that, that, that the color at the beauty shop is better for your hair and all that stuff. I'm telling you, I've been using this stuff since I was in my 20s. I love this color. To me, it's not, I mean, I just love it. My hair's always in good shape, never looks damaged. The only problem that I'm having now is that I'm getting some gray. And I'm going to show y'all up close to the camera what I'm talking about. I'm getting some gray, finally. I'll be 50 this year. And where it's turning gray, it's kind of hard for y'all to see, but where it's turning gray right in here, it looks, you know, because gray hair is more stiff and wiry. So my hair is starting to look that way in here. I think it has a lot to do with me wearing glasses and pulling them on and off too. But um, when you get color on your hair, it helps all that kind of smooth out. So I'm going to open this serum and put it on my ends, even if I don't really need to. Um, and all you do is open it up. And y'all probably see me squinting because I can't see hardly without my... Well, I can see. I just can't read. So I'm going to pour some of this in my hand and just uh, spread it on the ends of my uh, hair. And, um, and this is just a pre-treatment for your ends. Okay, that's all it is. Now, my hair was colored... And it was also highlighted the last time. This is probably, because since I do have some highlights in my hair and I'm coloring it, it's very possible that I'll have some light or red in my hair when I'm done. Okay, I'll have some dark and some medium and some light because my roots, as you can see, are kind of from here. They've, they've grown out about that much. And I think I had my hair colored in September. 
October, November, December, January, February. So it's been five months and my hair has grown uh, a good two inches. Okay. So um, we're going to take the developer. Uh, I always like to use the comb applicator. They come with, that's what this comes with. And I take the number two, whoops, and I open it and I put it in the developer bottle. And you just squeeze it in. And they've actually got a good bit of color in here. So if you got long hair, go ahead and buy two boxes in case you need it. But most of the time, uh, I always, when I had really long hair, I always used two bottles. Because I have thick, thick hair. Now, if you don't have real thick hair, you may not need two bottles. But I sure did when I had thick hair. I mean, when I had long hair. Now, you just shake the two up really, really good. I just put my fingers over the ends, and it's actually coming out. But I should have shook it up before I threw the cap in my here. Let me just get my cap out. I'm making a mess. Lordy B, where is my cap? I think I dropped it. Yeah, I don't even know where the cap is. I'm not a very good teacher, am I? Anyway, don't lose your cap. I'm going to shake it. Shake it up, baby, now. <laughs> um, Lord, it ain't going to hurt you. I'm going to turn on the hot water. <laughs> and put my hand over and shake it. And then, before I color my hair, I always put on my gloves. Okay, it shook. It is shaking. I shook it. I'm trying to use the correct grammar. All right, so we're going to rinse our hands off. Woo! Draw and put these stupid gloves on. Now, I have I have better gloves in here because of Mama, but I guess I'll use the ones that come in the thing since y'all are in here with me. All right, y'all, look. I'm, I'm recording with my phone. So when it rings, it's going to cut us off for a second, and I have to hit, you know, ignore, and then we'll be right back home, if you're wondering. All right, we're going to put my gloves on. That was my Aunt Carolyn. That was my Aunt Carolyn from Colored Valley. What about that? I wonder what she wants this morning. She must be cooking something. Tell me it's good or wanting something. I don't know. All right. She's a wonderful cook. And her daughter is too. I tried to get her daughter to go to L.A. with us and it didn't work out. So anyway, look, I'm going to put this on my hair. I just take it. You need to brush your hair first. But I use I use a, a wide comb like this. And um, I just take this because this is a comb. And you want to get your roots first. So I just squeeze it in on the roots. I start at the top. And then I just go down. Okay. I do the same thing over here. And you just squeeze it and go across the head like that. And then once you get the top, like I've got the top, okay, then you can go around and uh, do the roots in the back, okay. I just got some on my arm some kind of way. Now I'm putting it on the back roots. Now, what you can do is you can leave it on your roots for so many minutes and then finish the application for the rest of your hair if you're just wanting to mainly color your roots. But today I'm actually wanting to color all of it because my color was from Ulta instead of what I normally have. And so I don't, you know, I want to cover it up so it all matches. And I got some on my doggone arms. I don't know how I did that. I don't normally do that. Probably because I got this cape on. I don't normally wear a cape, y'all. <sighs> but I had to. Because I don't have on a bra. Who would want to put on a bra? And then color your hair and have to take the bra off. And I don't... My boobs are so ugly. And they're so whip crazy looking from having cancer. That I didn't want y'all to see through my t-shirt. Okay. Um... Let me, while that's soaking for a second, 
I'm going to get this color off my arms. Or my arms are going to be turned color. Look what I did right here. I don't know how I did it, but I did. Yeah, this cake kind of gets in the way when you're trying to color your own hair. All right. Now we're going to finish up. So you're going to rub it into the roots. And then you're going to take the rest of your color. What I usually do is I just pile like this much on top of my head. And I just squeeze some on top of it. Now I got a lot of hair. But I just squeeze it on there like that. And rub it in. And then you're going to see that I don't just rub in my hair. When I color it, I comb it in. Because I don't like to see women that color their hair. And you can tell they colored it themselves. You know what I'm talking about. Like, they'll miss some spots. Then I take it and I squeeze it in my hand to do the back. Because I know that if I try to just put it on my hair in the back, I'll probably get it all over me. So that's how I do the back. And then, um, once we get all of this on my hair, let me bend over and get this back part. Then we can start combing it through. Hey, y'all, we got, Chris used to work with a guy. He's bringing his daughter over today. And we're going to make a cookie cake. We can't do it live, but we're going to record it and show it to y'all. Later. Now, y'all know I've got my new site I'm going to launch for my new channel about cakes. And I might save it for it. And do something different with y'all tomorrow. I don't know. Decisions, decisions, right? Got a lot going on. Okay. It's pretty saturated. You can see these ends are still kind of dry looking. So let's squeeze a little bit on those. I've still got a little bit in my bottle, and I'm going to keep it, because when we brush it through, we'll probably find a spot that needs a little extra, okay? So make sure you get the back part good, the back of your neck good. Just rub it in all around the edges in the back. Now, what I do now, once I get it all on there, is I let it fall down. And I take a comb like this, and I comb it through. The reason I do that is if you don't do that, and they don't even do this at the beauty salon, but I think they ought to. If you don't comb it through, there are some strands that will wind up without color on them. If you comb it through, but don't use a fine comb. Use a big comb like this. But if you comb it through then you know that it's covered good. See, that's been combed through, so I'm going to lay it right there. Okay? And then you just keep going. If you've colored your hair and you've never combed it, I suggest, and you got hair that's longer. Now, if you ain't got hardly any hair, it don't matter. You know what I mean? Like when mine was really, really short, I didn't have to comb it through. But it it's smart to do it, I think. When you got a lot of hair. Like me. Boy, that's something none of us in my family, the girls, are missing is hair. We all got really, really thick hair. And my mama's hair is starting to thin a little. She's about, I think she's 75. Four. Let's see. She'll be four. Yeah, 75. She's 75. She just turned 75. So, see, this is a little bit dry, in my opinion. So, this is how you find the drier spots. And then you just put on more product. And then you always want to leave a little bit, believe it or not, I color my eyebrows when I'm coloring my hair. And I also... 
uh, make sure I go around the edge is good. Okay, it's good and coated. I think it's good. Now, when I color my hair, I leave it on for a good 45 minutes. 40 minutes or 45 minutes. So, we're going to do Bible study. But I'm going to get the edges right quick before we go into the kitchen. Boy, I'm a pretty thing doing Bible study today, ain't I, y'all? All right. Let's do, well, before I wash my hands, let's do the edges and do my eyebrows and we'll be done. So, I always leave a little bit in the bottom. And the best way to do it is use an eyebrow brush. And my eyebrow brush is actually in, um, or you can use a toothbrush if you got an old toothbrush. My eyebrow brush is actually in my bedroom. I got to go get it. My, my other toothbrush that I use is too. Let me run and get it. Uh oh, sorry. Here's my eyebrow brush, and here's a toothbrush. I'm going to use the toothbrush to do my edges, and the eyebrow brush to do my eyebrows. I put it on the edge, I put it on the sink, like where the soap holder thing is on the sink, and then I make sure all of the edges have color on them. And I don't know why, y'all may have the same problem, but I, this little spot right here and this little spot right here never wants to color like the rest of my hair. So I brush it. I put a little extra around the edges so that it looks natural once I'm done. Okay? Y'all probably think, boy, she goes to a lot of trouble. Well, it saves a heck of a lot of money. You know how much this cost me? $8.99. If I went to the beauty salon, I would pay at least $60 to $70, I guess. Okay, I got those edges, and then if you want to, you can do the back as well. If you like to put your hair up in a ponytail or something, you know, you want to make sure to get the back edges too. So I'll turn around and do that while y'all watch or try to do it backwards. And then we'll do my eyebrows. Then we'll go take a break. Okay, look how simple that is, y'all. Okay, now let's do eyebrows. I have to come in here and look at myself up close. I take an eyebrow brush like this to do my eyebrows. You don't want to do it with the... Um, with the toothbrush or you're going to stain your face too much, okay? So just put it right on the ends of the brow brush, like, I guess y'all can see that. And then take it and, of course, try to stay just on your uh, brow and not all over the face. Now, this color is lightest auburn. It's the same color that I've been using since I was in my 20s because I used to have real pretty <clears throat> red hair like Amy, and then it turned darker like May's. Well, I like it red. So if I use lightest auburn, everybody has always thought this was my real hair because I started using it pretty young, and it's such a natural looking red that, you know, it fools people. Matter of fact, I went to the doctor the other day, and the little girl that helps me is so sweet, and she has pretty red hair. And I said, do you color your hair? And she said, yes. I said, I bet I know what you use. I said, L'Oreal. She said, yes. How did you know? I said, because it looks natural. Because all of the other ones do not. But I could tell, I will say, that she didn't use excellence, that she used... Um, uh, preference, and the reason I say that is preference because it's like water, your, your coverage is not as good, and it is a little brighter red, which is a makes it a little less natural looking. 
so I don't like it. If y'all want to buy a pretty red, or even a, just an easy color to put on at home, I, I prefer the excellence because of it being, you know, the right consistency that it doesn't just get all over the place. I'm trying to use all my hair color, y'all. And I'm going to put the rest of this off the sink on the back of my hair. Then what you have to do is if you've got any spots on your face, you have to take a, a wash rag and soap it up and get them off your neck, ears, and face before you finish the process. And then that way you don't have stains all over you. Let me sit down so y'all can see what I'm doing. All right, I always rinse out my brush is good. You can use the toothbrush to, to do a good job rinsing out your uh, comb. And then just rinse out your toothbrush good. Pretty simple, huh? So, I use hot water. I love hot water. Hot water is one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. And y'all are not going to believe this, but somebody told me the other day when I was having all those migraines that I really needed to think about the chocolate I was eating, do you know that when I quit eating the chocolate, my headache stopped? And one day, I came in here and I snuck some chocolate, and I got a headache. Now, I was eating Hershey's chocolate. So I have to do an experiment to see if just maybe I could eat another brand. But if I can't, then I'm just going to have to be real careful when I eat it. I only eat it on special occasions when I don't have a whole lot to do. I don't mind having to take an Imitrex for my headaches. Okay, we're wiping off the sink. And now, now I've got a couple little spots on my face that I need to get off. And we're going to go to the kitchen. May and Amy did a, a biscuit bake-off yesterday. They watched a video of me showing you how to make the rolled biscuits. And they did it just by watching the video because they never come in the kitchen when I'm in there, I'm telling you. And y'all are going to be surprised at how good they did. I think. Or I don't see any more. All right, let's go. Now, I always put my glasses on because you can wipe them down. I put my glasses on real carefully so that I can see. Because how can we do Bible study if I don't have on hair glasses? Now, we're going to go to the kitchen. And I'm going to bring you with me. Hey, y'all. What you doing? That's how I talk to my dogs. I say, hey, girlies. What y'all doing? What you doing? It's their bedtime. They're in the crate. Now, my dogs sleep in a crate. Uh, I'll see. They get up in the morning. We let them out to go to the bathroom. It's dark in here. Y'all see my bed's not made up. I'm being lazy. Chris is cleaning because we are having his friends over today. So I said, get, get started, buddy. I'm going to get pretty while you clean. All right, here, I'm going to turn this around and let me go over there and see if I'm going to be in a good spot for y'all. I think I will. But I want to make sure. So, anyway, he's cleaning. Woo! I'm so glad he hasn't mopped in probably... He hasn't mopped in a while. I told him before he went to Florida, because I don't do the mopping because of my lymphedema. It about kills my arm. And I said, Chris... Um, would you please mop? When he got home, I said, Chris, you know you got a mop. He said, I know. So he's waited to the last minute before his friends get here. Plus, it's been raining all week. So what's the point in mopping? And do you know that I had my dogs groomed? And the, it, every time I had my dogs groomed, it's raining. It's crazy. Oh. Ouchie. Hurt my elbow, daddy. Okay. Um, do you want me to tell them anything special about May and Amy's competition? Because we got time on my hair processes. It's 11.33. Is that right? Chris? Yeah, 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 you want to come tell them something? 
to. Well, he don't want to speak to y'all this morning. He's busy. He's in his box. You know when men think, they think in boxes. I don't know if y'all know this or not, but we learn this. And when women think, they think, I've got some color on my glasses, y'all. They think like spaghetti. So like when a woman's mind is moving around, when a woman is thinking, her mind is thinking about a bunch of things at one time. You know, a woman can think about the kids at school, getting toilet paper, what she needs to do, what she needs to cook for breakfast, what she needs to get at the grocery store all at the same time. But when a man thinks, he thinks about what he's doing right then. They, they really do think that way. They think in boxes. So, like, when a man's at work, he's at work. When a woman's at work, she's at work, but she can also think about other things that she needs to do at home. Men are not like that. Women get mad at men because they don't think that way. But what they don't, what we don't realize as women is they really don't think like we do. They really don't. They're, they don't process things like we do. So you can't expect too much out of them. Uh, and when you do, then you, you wind up fussing. So the next time you think about your husband and why he doesn't, you know, think about two things at one time, even when they're driving, you know, when they're driving, they're driving. Um, so just remember that. So if your husband has a task, let's say like Chris is going to mop today and he's straightening up the house. And I say, Chris, will you come here and do this like I just did? He don't want to come in here because he's busy doing his task. He has to stay on task, and that's where his mind is. Anyway, I thought I'd throw that in. You got anything else you want to put with that, Mr. Nichols? We have the best study on marriage and relationships, not just marriage, but relationships, how to get along with people, um, that kind of thing. Now, with that said, am I am I a great friend sometimes, but I'm a very blunt and uh, honest friend. So most of the time I don't keep friends very long because they say they want your opinions and they say they want your advice. But then when you give them advice, uh, they don't really want to hear it. So I've got a good friend that I've kept for a while and I love her to death. Her name's Ellen. And she loves me unconditionally, and I love her unconditionally. That's how you have to have a real friend. Um, and, and so many women in general just, you know, we have a hard time. Um, and we, we say we don't, but we do hold grudges or not like people. And anyway, it's, it's hard to get a friend that's a woman that can love you unconditionally. Um, and Ellen does love me unconditionally. Uh, and we're so opposite, too. But uh, there's things that we are alike in. Um, so our study today is in Ecclesiastes. And I know I've got 60 viewers. And if I start talking about the Word of God, probably half of them will leave. But I encourage you to stay on. It's just a little short Bible study. I told them earlier about May and Amy. May and Amy did a biscuit contest yesterday in here. And they had to do the rolled biscuits, the ones that you have to put all the flour in the bowl, pat it down, add your shortening, add your buttermilk, you know, massage it, get it mixed up, and pinch off and put in the oven. So, have you already posted that? Yeah. Did you share it with Facebook? Yes. It's posted and shared with Facebook, so y'all can take a look at that. Today, um, we're doing a short Bible study, Jesus, Our Perfect Hope, by Charles Stanley. Uh, today's Bible reading comes out of Ecclesiastes, written by my, of course, Jesus is my favorite, but after Jesus, I know I should say Paul, but I have to say I love King Solomon, because I'm sorry, but he was the wisest man to ever walk the face of the earth besides Christ, and so I just love anything he writes. Um, he wrote uh, Ecclesiastes and Proverbs, and our reading today comes out of Ecclesiastes. And it says, February 22nd, every time I see the numbers, 2-2, two, two, I think, Chris, because he asked me to marry him on November the 22nd. And then we got married on April the 22nd. So I just love the number 22, or 2 even. Those are our numbers. And sometimes uh, when we go places and we get the number 22, it's exciting. And um, it says, go to listen. 
And this is Ecclesiastes chapter 5, and it says, Guard your steps as you go to the house of God and draw near to listen, rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools. Now, this is um, a really neat Bible study, and I'm going to read it word for word by Charles Stanley. That's what I always do with uh, my Bible study. And then we look a little bit in the Bible to see where we are with context. Okay, it says, There will be some burdens that will cause you to go to the throne of grace over and over again. And you know the ones, they are the problems that you keep that keep you up at night. And they are the first on your mind when you wake in the morning. You want the Father's guidance as you pers 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 persevere. Lord of mercy. I even have read this and I thought I wouldn't mess that up, but I did. You want the Father's guidance as you persevere through these challenges. And that is great. But you are going before him just to talk. Oh, it says, but are you going before him just to talk? Or are you actually stopping to listen to him? So this is a thing that, that he's trying to tell us is that when we go to pray to God and tell him about our troubles and tell him our needs and our wants, and even if we're praising him, we are the one doing the talking. And the only way that God has a chance to talk to us is if we stop to listen. We let the Holy Spirit kind of talk to us or we read in the word of God. And so that's what he's trying to tell us. Friend, God has the wisdom you need today. Don't doubt that. He already understands all there is to know about your troubles. Yes, go and share your heart with him. But remember, he is God and you are not. Show him the respect that he deserves by being quiet and allowing him to speak to you. Lord, y'all probably don't think I'm ever quiet. Most of the time I'm not. Uh, but at night, I do try to. Uh, when Chris goes to walk, that's my quiet time. I usually read the Bible, and have my quiet time before I take a nap when he goes out to do his exercise. It says, He is God and you are not, so show him the respect he deserves. Get on your knees before him in prayer. Open his word. Give him ample time to speak to you and agree with what he says. Keep seeking him and do not lose heart. Certainly the Lord will guide you, give you the wisdom you need, and lead you to overcome all you're facing. And then um, he has a little prayer. It's Jesus, you know the questions on my heart. Thank you for answering my every need and guide me always. Amen. And that's from Charles Stanley. So uh, that's a nice Bible study today, I think. Um, letting us know that we should give him our burdens and we should ask him uh, and tell him, you know, make sure that he knows that we're giving, um, we're trusting in him to help us with these things. But we should also... Um, Stop a minute and read his word and listen to what he has to say to us. Ecclesiastes, I think that was five and I lost my place. Let me look again. February 22nd, Ecclesiastes 5.1. And Ecclesiastes, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Ecclesiastes since we have time today. Ecclesiastes is a book in the Old Testament. Um... This is a, a study Bible that I have. I'm just looking. It says the Bible is never, this is the, about the book of Ecclesiastes. This is in our study Bible, okay? This is Chris's Bible. It says the Bible is never shy about confronting painful truths or hard questions. The book of Ecclesiastes faces the issue of how we can find meaning in life in light of the seemingly futile nature of everything. It will not allow the reader to retreat into superficial answers. It does not answer this problem by confronting us with hollow slogans. To the contrary, its motto is, all is vanity. But by forcing us to face the futil futility of human existence, it guides us to a life free of empty purpose and deceitful vindication. Lord, at these vocabulary words. Of course, my husband would know what all that means, but I don't. Um, the author, the author was David's son and king over Israel from Jerusalem. Uh, it speaks of the author as a writer of Proverbs to Solomon. So Solomon appears to be the author. Okay. It says that scholars believe that Ecclesiastes was written too late in Israel's history for this to be true. And they date the book at least 500 years after Solomon's time. However, strong evidence suggests 
that the book does come from the age of Solomon. For instance, it displays a great knowledge of literature from early Mesopotamia and Egypt. So the background, it says, is it's, it is a wisdom literature. So that's one reason I love it. Like I said, uh, Solomon was very wise. If you want to know how to be wise, according to God, you're not wise unless you um, get it from God. Wisdom comes from the Word of God. So uh, a lot of us think we're wise. And I remember being young and I thought I was so wise. And I've never read the Bible. I mean, I picked it up and looked at it and read it with the pre, you know, read it with my Sunday school teacher or read it with the preacher when he preached, but I never really read the Bible. So um, when I figured out that wisdom comes from it, because I just want to be wise, because I've always been kind of like a know it all kind of person. I know that sounds terrible, but it's true. Um, I decided I was going to read this book because I wanted to know what it said. And I didn't want to rely on other people to tell me what it said. So, of course, I read it front to back. Um, and it is amazing the difference it makes when you read the Word of God in your faith. And, the, you know, the Word of God, I mean, one of the verses in the Bible is faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And it made a huge difference in my faith. And the wonderful thing about it was is right when I finished reading the Bible, when my faith was so strong, because once you read this book, y'all, you can tell that a man could have never pinned it down and it been all by man. It had to be pinned from God and the Holy Spirit. It is an amazing, amazing book. And you don't know that unless you really uh, read it from front to back. I mean, really, it makes a huge difference in how you look at it. But anyway, after I read the Bible is when I was diagnosed with cancer. So God had it timed just right, and my faith was so strong, and I wasn't worried, and I and I didn't care if I died or not. I mean, I knew that if I died, I was going to go to heaven. So it was just such a blessing to me. So um, it can be a huge blessing to you. Uh, and, and remember that it's not normal for us to want to read it because we, you know, this is spiritual. And it's not normal for us to be spiritual because we are not, you know, just automatically spiritual. So it don't feel bad if you don't always want to read it or you really don't even want to read it, you know. But try to do it anyway and let God talk to you. Um, do you know I did not bring my speaker in here with me? I wonder, can y'all hear me? Chris, go get my speaker. Somebody uh, answer me. Can y'all hear me? Or are y'all just watching me on the screen? Because I did not bring the speaker in here with me. It is in the bathroom. Are you going to go get it? It's just laying on the counter in there. Can y'all answer me, please? Somebody, somebody. We've got 44 people on here and nobody's saying anything to me. I hope I didn't do this whole Bible study and y'all didn't hear any of it. Well, here comes the speaker. Can you believe that? Now, can y'all hear me? I've got my speaker. Nobody's even responding to me on the text thing. But anyway, I guess y'all heard me. I have no idea if you've heard me or not. Um, I'm sorry I left my speaker in the bathroom. Um, but anyway, the this says that um, Ecclesiastes recommends that we do two things in light of brevity in our days. Two things, okay? The first thing is enjoy life. Don't sweat the small stuff, right? And fear God. Those two things is what he suggests that we do for us to be have more wisdom in our daily life and be happier. And it's so funny that this lesson today is out of Ecclesiastes that was all about vanity because, look, when I got cancer, my vanity went out the door. And just like me coming on today, I'll have a stitch of makeup on, color my hair. I don't care. There are so many days that I would cook more if I didn't have to wear a bra. I'm just being honest with you. <laughs> because it 
that doesn't have anything to do with me not having on my makeup or my hair not being fixed. Most of the time, it's because I want to wear a t-shirt and I don't have my bra on. And one, one breast is up here and one breast is down here. And I don't want y'all to see how ugly it is. <laughs> how stupid is that? And sometimes I can put on a, um, what do you call it, an apron and it don't matter. But it, sometimes it does. So, anyway, I hope y'all are having a blessed day. It is 11.48. My hair's been processing. I don't know. I, when I turn this off, I'll know about how long it's been processing. But I wanted to come on and go ahead and do Bible study, color my hair. And then um, I may come back on while I'm taking it out of rollers and just letting you see what the pretty color looks like. I hope y'all have a blessed day. And I will see y'all later. Thanks for watching the Bible study. I have no idea if the sound was working or not because nobody ever responded. So um, I guess I'll go back and look at it. Love you. Thanks for watching Real Southern Woman, where we are just plain Southern women, I guess I could say. Bye. Love you.